I love to like look at things that are written, that are established by the city, established by entity, and reading between those lines and demonstrating that people write from their perspectives and that these things, these objects, these ideas, these historical markers, these settings that we're in are narrated from a perspective and we understand that. So I'm always trying to make sure I'm pushing back. I started Black Austin Tours actually as a continuation of a company that I co-founded in Panama called Afro Latin Next Travel. And so we were doing, and we still do a lot of black centered tours and experiences um, in Latin America. Being born and raised in this city and being deeply rooted in the black experience here, I didn't feel like there was the stories that I wanted. I, I would like to have been narrated about who we were and what we have contributed, contributed into this place. My family's history in Texas runs extremely deep. Um, one, uh, one that is deeply connected to the creation of what we understand Texas to be right now. The earliest arrival is in the 1820s with the Grimes family trafficking us in from what is Tennessee. And then another record that directly ties to the University of Texas is through my Hill family. My mother's last name is Hill. My grandfather, Leonard F. Hill, was a janitor at the University of Texas, born in 1922 on a cotton farm and a tenant in a sharecropping family, a legacy of, of slavery, was a janitor at UT. He opens his own barbershop in 1948, but he was never able to go to the university. And it was always a desire for him to have one of his children to go to the university. My mother goes to UT in 1976. She's not a fan of her experience while on campus because of what it was like being a black woman from a working class family in East Austin, whose father labored at the university, having to be there. And then for me to have a PhD firm there was something that I never really valued at the onset because I didn't have the best relationship with the University of Texas growing up here in Austin. It wasn't a university that was on my radar. But when I got to the university, when I got to the 40 acres in 2017, it really started to hit me what it all meant for me to be there. That legacy really started to touch me and understanding that I'm, I'm supposed to be here. Learning about the history and the exclusion of black people at that university all the way from the 1870s and these debates that we were having as a state after reconstruction, after slavery on how education would be distributed to the public and our desires as black people to have a public education at this state, to have a flagship institution and it being utterly denied to us. So that started to hit me deeply and I understood what it meant for my grandfather to be a janitor at that place, to be regarded as somebody who was only good enough to sweep around lecture halls, to sweep up and clean up. For me, his grandson of literal blood relation able to get one of the highest degrees a university conferred. And then UT became something different for me. I started doing the kayak tours because of the wonderful people at Rowan Dock, a um, hundred percent because of them. I always start with my family and our historical ties to Texas and this region, which run very deep. I encountered some records by one of the enslaving families of my ancestors and in this narration that they were giving of how they came to Texas, along came that a record of how they insert, how they trafficked, uh, and the, my ancestors arrived to labor on for them. And it was through the ports of Galveston, which empties very near to the river here in um, Austin, Colorado River. And then I started to find other records and research talking about how important the rivers were for the arrival of these thousands, literally becomes hundreds of thousands of enslaved people into what we understand to be Texas. And what that means in relation to this part, because as, as talking about people came here, and, and, and when you read a lot of the accounts of the formerly enslaved here in Texas, most of these people always have this recollection of how they came to Texas. They were brought here from Texas. Even when you look at the 1870 census, where this is the first time that black people are, are citizens of the U.S. And, and can be registered as people, you'll see in the, it's interesting when you look at Texas and you look at places of birth, 
you look at it, it will be Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, Tennessee, the, the minority of people in, that were enslaved in Texas were born here. I want you to have fun on these tours. I want you to enjoy the experience, but I want people to walk away with a, newer, with a new understanding, a new appreciation. I want them to challenge how they've been educated. I want them to challenge how they think. And I want them to always share something about this tour or something they learned on this tour with somebody else. I continue doing the tours here in Austin because I'm from here. I don't think I'll ever get to a point where this place won't mean something deep to me because in the research that I've done in my family, there is literally, on my mother's side at least, there's no other place in this entire nation since the disconnection of us as people from the continent of Africa through slavery that we have been in one place. The majority of my maternal great-grandparents enslaved and to and after enslaved or buried here in the Austin area. So for me, this will always be home. And because people are asking to have this information here. So in, in many ways, I feel like I have a responsibility to this city to continue what I started, just simply walking around screaming near at the top of my lungs to continue to grow on that because I'm realizing that it's making people think differently about this place. So anytime that I can come back home to the place that I'm from and help change perspectives or alter and force people to think differently about how they do in the place that they are inhabiting or living and making life, I'll continue to do it.